Last time on Nostalgia Critic Z, Critic was confronting the worst anime adaptation of all time. No, the other one. There you go. So shitty movie, you think you can piss off a legion of fans with your misunderstanding of source material? Your silence only enables your guiltiness. Now I will show you the meaning of pain. You can't fight this evil alone. Masako X from Team Four Star joins Nostalgia Critics' fight. Masako X from Team Four Star, you've come to join my fight? I totally just said that. You need a true Dragon Ball fan to understand this outrage. What do you know about Dragon Ball that I don't? Plenty. Like how he cut to the extreme wide shots to save on lip animation. And your anger over this will be represented by zoom out combined with grunting and clenching your teeth with your eye twitching. Grunt! Grunt! Now I will fight you by doing the same move repeatedly, and you doing the same dash repeatedly! <laughs> you fools are missing the real enemy! Little Karibo comes to talk sense into the feuding heroes. So, Little Karibo, you've come to talk sense to us, the feuding heroes? Am I just not here, or...? Get out of here, Yuki Blow! You're not even from the right anime! Maybe, but I'm smart enough to know that while you two are bitching like pansies, your opponent is building his power. My god! He's going stupid, Saiyan! It's okay. This usually lasts 10 minutes. There's surprisingly little fighting in the show. It's mostly us screaming while rocks rise up. But he's using his stupid Saiyan power to make stupid people say his movie is good. What? Impossible! Just check out its critical score. Uh, it's over 9%! What? 9%? There's no way that can be right, can it? People who don't know the show are being duped into thinking it's good! We can't let it get away with that! Agreed! Let dueling sides join forces just this once! And by once, we mean probably many times! What's up? In a long line of botched live-action anime adaptations, Dragon Ball Evolution is arguably the most infamous. For years I've gotten fan requests to talk about this cinematic ball buster, but sadly, even though I'm a fan of some anime shows and films, Dragon Ball is not one I know a great deal about. That's where we come in! Master Collect from Dragon Ball Z Abridged? And Little Karibo from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. That's right, a Japanese anime dubbed by Americans, now analyzed by two Brits! It makes as much sense as anything else in this movie. The Dragon Ball franchise is one of the most popular animes ever made. Taking place in a parallel dimension, it follows the adventures of Goku and his friends, defending Earth against intergalactic aliens, androids, and other various evils who really like to yell. With spin-offs including Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z Kai, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super, there's over 700 episodes of this franchise, and it's still going. So naturally it made sense for Hollywood to try and capitalize on it and make a movie for Americans. How did it go? Did Ghost in the Shell do bad? Yes. Then this did really bad. Fans of the show and newcomers hated this adaptation, claiming it not only missed what Dragon Ball was about, but dumbed it down so much that no average moviegoer would be able to enjoy it. It's said by many to be the worst anime adaptation of all time. Don't believe me? How many people thought the low-budget sketch that we just did was more faithful? That sounds about right. So let's not put it off any longer. Let's take a look at this Dragon Ball suck with Dragon Ball Evolution. I hope you're ready for an intro that's front-loaded as shit. I think I am. No, you're not. A warlord named Piccolo came from beyond the stars. A group of brave warriors created the Mafuba, a powerful enchantment that... Wow, I'm both lost and bored. Get, Get used, used to that. that. Aided by his disciple Ozaru, the evil pair brought the human race to the brink of annihilation. Okay, shot in the dark. A great evil tried to take over, is defeated, and now he's trying to come back. Wow, it's almost like you've seen a movie at some point in your life. Enough to know when to fast forward. Who gives this shit? We see our main character, played by Justin Chatwin, named... Goku? Um, I don't know a ton about the anime, but that really doesn't look like a Goku. Well, as a white man, I am offended. You are? Yes, stereotyping like that. I, for one, embrace culturally diverse names that in no way raise any questions or seem distracting. Wow, I really didn't think this was the angle you guys would lean. Of course. John Shaft would be so much better if he was called Akio Hashimoto. James Bond would be more culturally sensitive if he was named Bubba Grady. And Ariel from The Little Mermaid would be light years ahead of her time if she was called Bob. Oh, I see what you're saying. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. But if you name that rose shitty shitty ass piss... You might want to change something. 
Goku is trying his hardest to master his epic nose sweat. This movie clearly understands what to shoot in slow-mo. As his grandpa states what we know this adaptation took to heart. The first rule is, there are no rules. Well, we've given an excuse not to follow these. First one to touch the ground loses. That's the second rule after the first rule of there being no rules. <laughs> Crouching tiger, not so hidden green screen. <laughs> and now a brief recreation of the audience reaction to this first two minutes. <laughs> this movie does know the difference between an anime and a Donald Duck cartoon, right? <laughs> Slimy yet seething with anger-filled disappointment! Next, we'll fight without the wires. Next time on Dragon Ball Marionette. So in the original show, Goku was a young, naive fighter obsessed with perfecting his gift and honoring the art of combat, fighting when he needs to. Here, he's a whiny little pissant who just wants to be cool and get laid. Everybody at school treats me like I'm nothing, Grandpa. Teach me how to get the girl. To be fair though, that is a lot of episodes of a character's life to fit into one movie. Don't worry, that's why there is the slumming it fairy. What? The slumming it fairy. She magically provides stock lines when you don't want to put real work into a character. Yeah, what? Well, we don't want to put any effort into one of Japan's most beloved characters. But we still want a paycheck for it. Can you supply us with some dated angst? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Ooh, here's a tired classic. I'm different. I'm different. Here's one with no effort. I want to explode. I want to explode. And who can forget the popular Teach me to be normal. Teach me to be normal. Ooh, and don't forget, what friends. What friends. We did it! We reduced someone so special to so many to someone not the least bit special in any way. Yeah, don't forget you get stock parental advice for no additional charge. Ooh, she's right, including you're special. You're special. Normal is overrated. Normal is overrated. And have faith in who you are. Have faith in who you are. Thanks, Slumming It Fairy. You took from other source material, even though we have plenty of source material to already take from. Whatever. Can I get high on your couch? Sure. This is only gonna get worse, isn't it? Yes, it is. Save some room on that couch. Goku's grandpa gives him a present for his birthday. A Dragon Ball, which when combined with the other six will grant a perfect wish. Well, we know they're never found because this film is still here. In all the world, there are only six others. Sushinchu means four stars. You know, something this film will never see. Thanks, Grandpa. So the Dragon Ball universe that seemed to magically take place in the past, present, and future, expanding the world-building possibilities of the imagination, is now just the future. Apocalyptic? Utopian? Techno? Bland. Again, having not seen much of the anime, I can still pick up that the movie's environment looks practically nothing like the show's environment. Even the environment in the film is not very well defined. It would take a while to even realize we were in the future unless we were told. This could be the set to any random film where with the show, just one image could tell you immediately you're watching Dragon Ball. Yeah, but at least the film's bullies. Make me pay, Giko. I generic do. Come on, Giko. Show me what you got. <laughs> yes, you'll realize very quickly that the facial expressions that Goku has range from violent farting to trying to project himself off the ground farting. Don't a lot of people do fart jokes when talking about this movie? Didn't you hear rule number one? There are no rules. Next time on Dragon Ball Metamucil. Oh, um, meanwhile, on Bowser's airship, a villain named Piccolo is wondering why being hundreds of feet in the air gets him surprisingly little wind resistance. In the show, Piccolo is complex and had interesting reasons for why he wanted ultimate power. He was so interesting that even his offspring would eventually become friends with our main hero. Here? Just a colossal twat. Right. He wants to take over the world because, you know, evil and stuff, and sends out his minions to find the Dragon Balls to achieve his goal. Do you like my assassin uniform? And make sure you know that I have brass. In a 
enough of that shit, we gotta cut to horny Goku. To be fair, Goku in the show was awkwardly horny too. Yeah, but he'd never seen a girl before, so he didn't know he was horny. Does that make it better? Better than this. I'll agree to that. Yeah. What might our ancestors say about the upcoming solar eclipse? Well, my grandfather would say beware of the Nemex. Nemex? Yeah, they're an alien race that nearly destroyed Earth over 2,000 years ago. Well, we have no idea how this future works, so we have no idea how crazy this is supposed to sound. Well. Oh. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Hmm? <laughs> Keep it in Scientology. But it looks like Goku's help with the lockers might have earned him some tail. Not actual tail, that'd be like the show. Hey! Goku, right? Pfft, like anyone would cast me as a Goku. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, yes, that's my character. You use your key. Wait, you know about key? Just because my name is Chi Chi doesn't make me a complete idiot. Right? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what? I'm having a party tonight at my house. I'll be there. Oh, that's a pretty shot. Well, back to shit. Beauty awaits. Is there a film theory that he's just the pain in the ass he played in War of the Worlds after the aliens invaded? Nobody wasted any theories on this film. Goku sneaks out of his house to go to Chi-Chi's party, where the bullies who literally have no reason to mock him, mock him. I was invited, I'm not looking for any trouble. Trouble found you, freak. So listen, why don't you turn around, walk away, no one will even know you were here. Yeah, you freak with your good looks and your, your nice hair and your fancy clothes -y. What are we doing? I'm not doing that anymore. The, the dorks are gonna rumble tonight. <laughs> Thank God we all know really bad kung fu. Especially this guy. How far away was that punch? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. I've been snidered! Did he just slide across the car with his head? Oh, come on, even Krillin wouldn't do that. By the way, is he even in this? No. Oh, piece of shit film. Should I be angry at that? Yeah. I'm really angry! So the original Goku, who hated fighting and only did it when he had to, is now tossing one-liners like an unfunny James Bond. And fart faces too. <laughs> Nevertheless, he defeats the bullies and gets friendly with Chi-Chi. What happened to your parents? Uh, I don't know. But my grandpa said everything will be explained to me when I turn 18. My grandpa's kind of a dick. But he might not get his wish, as grandpa is attacked by Piccolo, who is literally dressed like a Piccolo. He destroys the house because apparently Piccolo can do that now, and Goku comes home to his dying mentor. Find Master Roshi in Pazu. Tell him Piccolo has returned. No, if you'll excuse me. There's a dead mentor poker game with Obi-Wan Kenobi, Uncle Ben, Dumbledore, and Mickey I need to attend. In a better hurry, I hear Gandalf might drop by briefly. After searching the house, Goku finds, I think, a second present he was going to give him. Grandpa. <laughs> Even his dead grandpa laughs at how stupid that looks. <laughs> but he quickly discovers he's not alone. Where is it? I know it's here. Are you Piccolo? The casting's so bad, she could be. Actually, this is Bulma, played by Emmy Rossum. Singing? No. Good. They originally met when Goku was a little boy, but now in this, they're the same age. It works because, wait, no it doesn't. If I was a Piccolo, whatever that is, I wouldn't tell you. Somebody stole my Prometheum orb, and I'm here to get it back. You know this movie has enough whitewashing. Do we really have to dubwash too? PhD in Applied Dynamics. They're gonna make me famous. What a story, Mark. Somebody hacked the vault, killed the guards, and stole the Dragon Ball. What is this, Spy Kids? I've seen toy commercials with more realistic technology. This can detect and locate the signature wavelengths emitted by the Dragon Balls. Thank God they talk about the important stuff that really matters in this film. Well, you made a Dragon Ball Energy Locator? Dragon Ball Energy. DBE. Catchy name. Son of a bitch! No, no, no! It's okay! It's okay! Knock, knock, knock. It's okay! It's okay! We're gonna get through this, all right? Give me the gun. You're okay. You're okay. Just back over there. Back. You're doing good. You're doing good. Okay. Better than last time. Yeah. He's a big fan. They agree to join forces to find the other Dragon Balls, and they ride on her. My God! The bullshit levels are through the roof. 
They go to find Roshi as his grandpa instructed and locate him in the house from up. Next time on Dragon Ball Seriously? Seriously? Goku wakes up Roshi and makes the sad discovery that Chow Yun Fat found a film worse than Pirates 3 to appear in. <laughs> Stop! CGI is atrocious! I am Muten Roshi! The principal! <laughs> to be fair, Chow Yun Fat, while certainly different, is not that bad a choice for this role. He's a wisecracker, a little pervy, and energetically full of himself. But then there's scenes like this. My grandfather is dead. <laughs> It doesn't get rid of the pain, but it does make it hurt a little less. his most heartfelt powerhouse performance. I will avenge him. But before he... he died, he asked me to find you. What do you think the directing for that scene was like? Non-existent. Roshi gives them his Dragon Ball and says he'll join them to find the others. Shitter was full! I will take you to a secret place. He takes them to a training temple that looks more like Mortal Kombat High School, where, what a surprise, Chi-Chi happens to be training there. Nobody at home knows this, but I'm a fighter too. They just wouldn't understand. What does that even mean? Fighting for money? Fighting for justice? Fighting for fun? Nothing else in this world makes sense, so why should this mean shit? After that seemingly pointless scene. Seemingly? Entirely. They fall down a hole and get trapped by a guy named Yamcha. Let me handle this. I'd be uh, so grateful if you could just help me and my friends out. I'm gonna need some payment. Payment? Let me try. I'd be uh, so grateful if you would just help me and my friends out. Just think it over, because after the sun comes out, it's going to be hot, hot, hot. <laughs> hot. Just because you can improvise doesn't mean you should. They build a fire as it gets late in the night, and Roshi literally tells the same story we heard in the opening. But Bulma finds out, only now for some reason, that the Dragon Ball is buried beneath them. That's lucky. <laughs> Enough games. WHY DIDN'T HE DO THAT BEFORE?! ASS! They offer to pay Yamcha if he helps them dig, which is weird because that means they could have just paid him before anyway. How many hours did they waste down there? So digging through a hole somehow leads them to the top of a volcano... <laughs> ...where Piccolo sends his putties, I mean minions, to stop them. In doing so, though, he only provides a way for them to get to the Dragon Ball. Our evil strategist, everybody. Oh. Oh. Ah. The floor is literally lava! Goku gets the ball, but is pretty easily defeated by Piccolo's assassin, only to have her easily defeated a second later. Look at this, he talks in the next scene like he doesn't even notice her. There's this demon, Osaru. He will kill you. Oh, there's a lady, too. She got a swing in. Just pointing her out in case she was supposed to be a powerful second-in-command. So Chew the Fat, Harmony Star, Surf Ninja, and Elijah Wooden all travel to the temple of underappreciated Ghostbusters. How is my favorite skeptic? I need another containment vessel. I mean, we saw what happened to the last one. You done? Yeah, 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 yeah. So even though in the show the focus is on mastering energy, here it's mastering... Airbending. They do not call it that. Oh, but they do. The most basic of all the airbending techniques. Do they know the difference between animes, non-animes, and abominations of God? I'm honestly surprised Sailor Moon isn't in this. Next time on Dragon Ball The Last Airbender. Oh, forget it. Hey, Kyle, where are you going? Get back here, you coward! I'm sorry, guys. You know, Dragon Ball Evolution is one thing, but throwing Shyamalan in there, too? I still have my shame to hold on to. You'll never next time on Dragon Ball Z again! Wait, Fist! Wait, Fist! 
Funny, by the way, how in the show Goku was a child prodigy, and here he can't even light a goddamn candle! Well, that's because he's not properly horny baited. Every time you light a torch, you get to take one step closer to me. No, I swear, that happens to all guys. It doesn't feel right. I must be missing something. You have to make every move your own. You've stolen from like a million other films. Something has to be original. He finally gets it, but Piccolo's assassin breaks in disguised as Chi-Chi, stealing the Dragon Balls. <laughs> Rossum has a look that says, wow, how are the duck's effects are way more convincing right now? He's alive, but barely. Goku has a near acting experience where he sees his grandpa and, you know, it's not your time, have faith in who you are, blah 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 blah. It's not your time, Goku. Always have faith in who you are. Oh, come on! That was just a generalization! He actually says that?! Why not just have him say, Plenty of fish in the sea. Remember to drink your milk. Meow, 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 meow. Hashtag popular phrase! No, 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 Grandpa brings Goku back to life because he's only half dead, and they go to stop Piccolo after apologizing to Ernie Hudson for having him for only two minutes. Pray it is enough to contain Piccolo. Namaste. I spent three hours in makeup for this. Thankfully, their car is shitty shitty bang bang, and can fly fast enough to stop Piccolo's monologuing. Imagine being shackled so tightly that every atom in your body stood compacted with this dragon ball i take my vengeance upon the earth you know just because your underacting is way better than their overacting doesn't mean it's not underacting they get there at the start of the eclipse and try to stop him from taking over the world look he even has the outfit on it's totally dragon ball now guys i will defeat ozaru and i'm here to destroy you <laughs> defeat ozaru <laughs> you can barely act! But in a bizarre twist, Goku, it turns out, is Ozaru, turning into a monster. Would've been nice if someone prepared him for that. My grandpa said everything will be explained to me when I turn 18. No! Goku is a shell. Shell. <clears throat> this is who you are. The fart faces must flow! <laughs> Zaru, they have a Dragon Ball. Don't make my voice sound even more disinterested. Goku kills Roshi, but remembers who he is and turns back. Impossible. Something my grandfather taught me. First rule is... Always read the script. There are no rules. Then how is that the first rule? That's just dumb! Piccolo and Goku finally face off, and for a movie adapted from a show known for its fighting, this fighting sucks some harsh balls. <laughs> Bible Man had better effects! Look at this, most of the fighting is just Goku trying not to get his ass kicked. No, that's not true. He hit him once, twice. Oh my god, I think that's it. One of the most famous fighters in anime, and he gets two hits! Well, look at it this way. We should just live here. Goku realizes he has to be both himself and Ozaru, whatever that means, and he unleashes the ultimate power. That's right, the Kamehameha. In the show, this is always the highlight, an incredible display of power blowing everyone figuratively and literally away. Here, I think he turns into a screensaver. Oh no! He's turned into 3D pipes! Actually, can we just watch that? They are more convincing. I truly believe that they're pipes. The eclipse wraps up, but nothing compares to the shade this movie has given to the Dragon Ball franchise. But hey, now that Goku has the Dragon Balls and has one perfect wish, what's he gonna use it on? Dragon! The test of seven has been fulfilled! I compel you to come forth and grant my wish! Not until you say it like you give a shit! Christ! <sighs> that putrid pus looks so fake you could have Sean Connery voicing it. Give life to Mutin Roshi. 
funny. He could have used that wish to grant world peace. Or bring back his grandpa, the person who raised him. Oh, maybe have the power to grant back anyone he wants whenever he wants? How long was this journey? They had plenty of time to talk about this! But the Dragon Balls are gone, and they have to find them again. No, oh, no, as if this film didn't already repeat shit we've seen a million times. But it's cool, because Goku reunites with Chi Chi, who stayed behind while everyone else fought. Yeah, where was her lazy ass? Because that's what Dragon Ball is all about. Goku punching Chi Chi's heel in midair. And just when you think it's over... Well, the pain never really stops, Critic. I know, but in terms of the movie's ending, it turns out they have a mid credit stinger. It's revealed that Piccolo is still alive, and he's being tended to by a woman. Okay, that should only take five seconds to reveal. Big whoop. Well, they do apparently think that it is a big whoop, because they spend about a minute and a half dragging this reveal out. A minute and a half? What the hell can you show in that amount of time? Well, the suspenseful build-up of picking plants... Bringing the plants inside! Putting the plants in the medicine! Making the medicine! Whoa! Oh my... Yes! Carrying the medicine down the hallway! Okay, we get it! Critic, this is all essential in delivering such a powerhouse reveal. Bringing the medicine into the room. <sighs> Dabbing a cloth in the medicine, and then the reveal. You're not happening, sequel. Right, right, that was so stupid. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. A cold day in hell. Oh hey, Kyle came back! That's right, and only Ryu, or Ryu, or however you say his name, can save the day. God damn it, John Bailey, you're not Kylie Bear! But I fooled you for a minute, didn't I? Subscribe to my channel. So that was Dragon Ball Evolution. Whether you're an average moviegoer, or a diehard fan, it blows! It's visually disjointed, it has little to no world building, the acting is awkward, the effects are lame, it's pretty laughably bad. Fans that have waited years for a faithful live action movie are gonna have to keep waiting, because this has no idea of what Dragon Ball was about, or what made it so special. It doesn't work in any way, and any newcomers that are introduced to Dragon Ball this way risk losing a fan for life. It's just one big disrespectful mess. Well, I probably would have hated the movie anyway, but thank you guys so much for showing me on how many different levels I should hate it. <laughs> no problem, Critic. My miserable pleasure. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember- Hey, wait. You sure you guys don't want me to narrate you out? You know, guys, maybe I was jumping the gun a little bit when I left and like, Hey, who the hell are you? Um, I'm Kyle Hebert. <sighs> I'm gone for a minute and you already get another Kyle Hebert? I'm sorry, but he's a pretty good Kyle. Thanks. He was talking to me. Well, there's only one way to settle this. That's right. Right, a uh, Kyle Bear off. What? Agreed. You two will face off to see who's the best narrator of Dragon Ball Z. You in? All right. Let's do this. Okay. Get ready. Get set. <sighs> Guys, it really is Kyle. Yeah, it's true. He was there first. Yeah, good point. Kyle, you win. Yes. Hey, what? The I'm the nostalgia critic. I'm Masako X. I'm Little Karibo. And avoid Dragon Ball Evolution like the plague. reclaim his former glory, which was unceremoniously squashed on DBZ? Will Goku be able to close the hole in the ozone layer caused by all the hairspray used in his Super Saiyan do? Can Ox King find true love on Tinder? When will Mr. Satan join the WWE and become an honorary member of the New Day? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Does the main in Spain fall mainly on the plain, or just in Detroit?
DBE. Catchy name. Hello, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing the American Refugee Committee. This is an international NGO that responds to crisis and helps refugees build lives of dignity and self-sufficiency. They work in 11 countries in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, bringing more than 35 years of expertise and services, such as health and sanitation, to empower refugees around the world. Refugees share with them what they need, and they work together to create programs that make the most sense for that particular community, pursuing new and better solutions to enduring humanitarian challenges. By supporting and co-creating with local organizations, they've been able to reach around the globe and reach a unique and sustainable impact on communities. Both their site and their YouTube channel show the incredible work that they do, and they even earned an a on CharityWatch.org. Give them a look and see how you can help these people continue their amazing achievements. Thank you.